Hi, everyone. I'm glad you've made it into my session about the deep learning with TensorFlow. My name is Matthias Prokop. Uh, I'm the principal architect in Natalik. I started off as a founder of Bubakov. I've been always focused and really enjoyed uh, anything around Linux and open source. Uh, recently, I'm working for the company Natalik uh, and, and the focus mainly around the data center and DevOps and network automation. So what we will do today, um, I will walk you through uh, how the TensorFlow can be used for uh, car plate recognition. I will introduce you to the TensorFlow. I will explain you what are the differences between the TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite, what are the data models and data sets, and how you can actually make the data models out of the data sets, how the TensorFlow and car plate recognition will work, and what, what we can improve in the future. So what do we want to actually build? Uh, we want to build a device which can recognize the car plate. Uh, basically, what we want to do is we, when we will see the car, we will recognize the car. And after we will recognize the car, we can focus on the car plate and do the OCR. We want to read the car plate. When we will have the information from the car plate, we will send those data into the database and we will collect those data uh, and present them in some front end or process them in something more advanced. For the start, uh, I've decided to use the Raspberry Pi. The reason is that ARM devices are great for proof of concept. Uh, you can basically build the software, and then when you're ready for the production, you will replace it with something more powerful, and it can run nicely on the edge. Uh, we will use the camera, which is available for the Raspberry Pi as well, and we will need a data set. Data set is something which I will explain uh, in the future, but essentially data set will be collection of the pictures, car plate pictures and car pictures. And we will need a GPU. We will need a lots of GPUs. If you are building the data model from the data set and you are learning uh, the da the, your data model, you will need a lots of uh, compute power to produce, to produce those data models. Um, in my experience, the easiest way is to use the GCP virtual machines. You can see you can see more details about how to use the GCP for the, for building data models in the in the next few slides. So, what is actually the TensorFlow? TensorFlow has been developed by Google and used by Google, but also by other companies like Uber and Spotify. The reason why different companies are using it for different use cases is that it has the various uh, applications. You can use it for the object detection, which is going to be our case, but you can also use it for the text classification. You can read the text, you can classify the text, and you can do the face recognition as well, uh, which can be, especially nowadays around a COVID, very helpful when you need to, for instance, recognize if somebody is wearing the face masks or if you need to know who that person actually is. And once the training is done, TensorFlow can be run on many different platforms. So in our case, we will, we will be running it on a Raspberry Pi, but if we're gonna decide in the future to replace that platform for something more powerful or actually something more compact, it's gonna be much easier for us to do than with some other, uh, other products. And it can incorporate many different APIs to build at scale deep learning architecture like CNN or RNN which are the object detection, uh, object detection tools. So a little bit of detail, what is the data set? Data set stays for a large collection of small pictures. I'm saying small pictures because I came into many issues when I started to use the large collection of uh, medium sized pictures. TensorFlow doesn't like it. And uh, sometimes it's having the issues with data, building the data models from the larger pictures. We need the pictures with, from, of, of cars and car plates from the various angles, scales. We need to add some noise levels into it. And we need the various picture qualities. So all you know, the best pictures always doesn't mean it's the best for building your data model. You need to make it sort of difficult for the computer to, to build a data model, like in the real world. And pictures needs to be named and annotated. I will explain a little bit more uh, in the next few slides how you can annotate the pictures, how does it look like. And then we will test and train those pictures. So you will need to split your pictures into the two categories. One will be for testing and one will be for training. So when you will be training your data model, you will have a set of pictures which you will be using for testing 
and constantly improving that data model. There are multiple techniques for how to improve your data set. And uh, I will try to explain in here how this can be done. You can use the various angle scales and noise levels. Uh, in the end, however, this will make your objects recognition much more reliable. TensorFlow is very sensitive about size and format of the pictures. I have found out the hard way that if TensorFlow doesn't have the right inputs, it will be unstable or it will be just hang and do nothing. Anyway, back to our data set. How does it look like? So this is the example of, of my data set of the pictures with the, with the various car plates, which we will use uh, for building the data model. And now the funny part, when we will split those pictures into the two folders, we will need to annotate all of them. Annotating pictures means that we will frame the object which we are interested in every single picture. Yes, this will take a while. For these purposes, I would recommend using label image, uh, which is on this, on this uh, slide. So now when we have a data set done, what should be our next steps? We will start with uploading images to the virtual machine. In GCP, you can go into the marketplace and launch deep learning virtual machine. We will upload our data set to, the, to, this, to this machine and run the data set through the object detector to build our new data model, which we'll use for object detection. But what is actually that object detector? We have data set where we have defined objects which we want to detect, but we don't have the detector which will help to teach our data model those defined objects. Finding the right object detector, at least for me, was not really easy. Uh, you have to take into the consideration multiple factors, like what objects you will be detecting, where you will be running it, how fast the objects will need to be detected, etc. This is another huge topic, and perhaps I will talk more about it uh, later. But to keep a very long story, uh, I will borrow the info from this great post on Medium. And the SSSD with the mobile net provides the best accuracy and trade off within the fastest detectors. For large object objects, SSD can outperform faster RCNN. Uh, but based on this, I've decided for the SSD mobile net version two. All right, good stuff. We're finished with the preparation and we can finally start to build a data model. In my case, I've decided on a virtual machine and GCP as I mentioned. So let's look at this. This is how it looks like when it is done. We will run the command to start training our module. This will take from eight to 16 hours, really depends on how accurate you want to have. On this next slide, uh, I'm showing you the high level summary of commands, which you will need to run to build your data model and convert it into TensorFlow Lite. I would recommend to visit the code exchange where I share the more details about each command and a little bit more details about each of these steps. So this was fun. We have a data model and we can now run this command. And this is what we will get. Uh, we can recognize the car plates uh, on each of these cars. That's a great start. Our next step will be to crop the recognized car plate and run the OCR on top of it. For this purposes, we will use OpenCV and PyTesseract uh, libraries. OpenCV will allow to crop the car plate from the frame, and then we will also do, do the OCR recognition, which we will crop the image from the frame. And when we have the car plate cropped and ready for OCR, we want to make letters readable as much as we can. And this is showed as the biggest challenge in my project. Car plates are usually taken from a different angles and they have a different sizes. It's not really challenging for TensorFlow to detect the car plates, but it's very challenging for OCR to read the plates. As you can see in the picture, the best combination I have found is to make a great picture and reduce the noise. We will use the same data model in the same folder, and on the video, it looks something like this. As you can see, we can now read the car plate letters, and we are ready to, uh, to ship them and send them to uh, anything we have on the other side, like database. So what we have done uh, with this device, we have been able to run the TensorFlow Lite on the Raspberry Pi, recording the cars with a camera, recognize the templates with the TensorFlow Lite, and read car plates with a Google Tesseract. And we could then, then send the car plates to the, to the API. In my opinion, I think the biggest weakness appeared to be the camera resolution for this device, uh, which in this case on Raspberry Pi is not really great. Um, even though I was recording video on the iPhone, uh, it still wasn't very good, mainly because of the optics and zoom ability. I can imagine the statically mounted proper high resolution cameras pointing to the same area all the time 
will be much better. Performance-wise, I think TensorFlow Lite showed that this is doable on Raspberry Pi. It was able to detect the car plates in real time. The weakest point was the OCR. OCR is super sensitive to light, quality, angles, and noise. One significant improvement in the future could be to use the TensorFlow for the, for the OCR, but that's for another project, I guess. These are the links where you can find the repository with the code and Twitter handle. So please get in touch and you will find the more details on the code exchange. Thank you very much for listening to my session uh, and I'm looking forward to hear from you in the future.